Hello and welcome to another edition of the Board Watch Weather. Today we're going to be building um, a Seiko tuner, sort of look like the original. So here we have the case, which I got from AliExpress. It's a very, very nice case, AR coating, very solidly built. Got S on the crown, which I didn't actually know it was going to have, but it had S on the crown. It's got a ceramic insert bezel. Um, with a loom pip, a raised loom pip. I don't really like the raised loom pips. Um, the original didn't have that, so we're not going to be using it either. And I'm going to be swapping it out for another ceramic bezel. This ceramic bezel came on another watch. Uh, it was a steel dive. So as you can see, it has no loom pip. It's a fully loomed ceramic insert bezel, but we're going to be using that one. So if we have a quick look at the case, it turns really nicely. It's a really, really well built case. I think it's made by Heimdahler. Very good quality. Uh, the whole construction just feels really good. Uh, you know, even the uh, crown has got, you know, I think it's got three O-rings on it. It's, it's really, really nice. So I'm going to be using this case to build the Seiko tuner. So here we have the watch hands for the build. These watch hands came from WR watches. Um, these were the closest I could find. In fact, they're almost identical to the original hands. Uh, I think the minute hand is a bit longer on its balance than it was on the original. But the most important thing is this one actually has the second hand that has the, the bisection in the middle. So it looks as realistic to the original. And here we have the dial. This dial is also very close to original. And um, I was lucky enough to find this, this dial and it's as close to original as I, I could find with the Professional 600. Excellent looking dial. Loom is pretty good as well. It's not the greatest loom, but it's, it's, it's pretty good loom. And we're gonna be using this dial to do the build. And lastly, we've got a strap from Watch Gecko, FKM rubber, sort of SKX style sort of uh, divers band, which is similar to what the original watch would have had. So we're going to use that. So here we have the dial and it's got the dial feet on it. Now this dial is created to go in the original watch. So we're going to have to take off the hand, uh, the feet that go on this so that we can stick it onto our movement. So it's just a case of snipping these off, making sure it's as flush as possible. If there's some little bit stuck up, then just just sand them back a little bit um, and then clean the dial. So here we have the NH35, which we're going to put onto it. What I've done is I've just put onto it a dial that has 3.8 position, four o'clock crown. So I can find what the date is. I kind of know what it is, but you know, just make sure it's easy. It's a bit easier. So it gives us the date. Then it's a case of popping on the dial dots or the double sided tape as I use. So pop on the double sided tape, I put it in four positions around the um, holder, the plastic holder. And uh, stick these on, cut it off, make sure that it doesn't interfere with the calendar disc. And um, then remove the, the backing paper, make sure that doesn't drop drop into the, uh, into the movement either, obviously. And then just smooth off the, the edges of the uh, tape to make sure that it's ready to go for the dial and it's as simple as that really the main point is make sure it doesn't interfere with the calendar disc really so once that's done it's a case of popping on the dial and i've found that these dials i managed to source actually go on really well they match they match the movements really easily go on really well so it's, it's quite easy so just line it up as best you can there is a little bit of forgiveness in the double sided tape worst case scenario take it off start again go again really um, once it's on, what you want to do is make sure that the uh, calendar disc can still move freely, that it's not binded up on the back of the the uh, dial. To be honest, I've never I've never had that as an issue, but I can see how it could possibly happen. Um, so once that's done, you check that it's all okay. Push it down tight. Not too hard because, of course, it's, it's the movement's resting on a cushion, so don't push, go bending anything. So then it's a case of just putting on the hands. So to put on the hands, 
wind the watch round to 12 o'clock, let it tick over, then you know where to put your hour hand. So we'll start putting the hour hand on. Make sure you've got the correct pusher. Use a bit of the Ronico to hold the hour hand in place and then push it down. You can definitely feel a bit of a click when it goes down. Just check that it's, it's all flush, it's not bent or anything like that. And then just wind it round. Well, I like to wind it round to six o'clock position because I find it a lot easier to do that than to keep the hand at 12 o'clock and put the other hand on top. That technique doesn't work for me. If it does for you, pull it. Okay, then it's a case of putting on the hour hand, sorry, the minute hand. And as you can see here, this minute hand is a little bit longer than it should be. If you compare it with the original, the balance end is a little bit longer. It's more like the modern version. I think there was a reissue that they did that had this type of hand, but it's the closest I could get to it. It's also a very good hand. As I said, it came from WR watches. Um, reasonably expensive. Uh, I think it cost about 30, 30 pounds. So it's, it's the quite expensive hand, but they come with the all important uh, seconds hand that's got that bisect in it. So as you can see, it's just a little bit off. So what we're going to do is what I normally do is just push that back. As long as it's got the play in it, if it hasn't pop the hands off, go again, push it back. So it lines up to the 12 o'clock. And then what you want to do is check it to make sure that it is in time. Then we're going to put on the seconds hand. Now you should just be able to see there that the seconds hand does have that cut in the middle. Absolutely lovely. I think it makes the build, to be quite honest with you. I did order another set of hands and it didn't have it. And it's, I just scrapped them because it's just, it's not going to work. That, that seconds hand is really important to getting the look for this watch. And I think it's such an unusual second hand, second hand, regardless, even if you're not going to build it like the original, if you're going to build this tuner, I think you use this second hand anyway, because it looks so unique and it, you know, it's really good. It really offsets the build, in my opinion, of something slightly different that you've not seen before. So what I've done there is to check all the hands are okay, which they are. It's now a case of popping in the crown stem. So what we're going to do is remove the uh, packaging stem that came with it. And then we're going to take the crown and we're just going to thread it onto the stem so that we can measure and cut it. So thread it on, get it done as, as tight as you can. If you need to use a pair of pliers on the spare um, threads, then do that. Don't crank it down too much. So let's quickly just pop the movement into the case so you can get your sort of first look at what it's going to look like. As I said, very nice case. I'm just going to use a screwdriver, put down on the um, movement holder, plastic movement holder, to get the watch movement in position. And then it's a case of putting in the crown, feed it in, twist it lightly backwards or forwards. It will go by itself, does not need pushing or forcing in any way because that could damage your movement. Once you've done that, it's a case of we need to make sure that it's in the correct, um, so it's not in um, changing of time or date or like that. Then measure the distance between the crown and where it goes into the watch, okay? We're gonna use that basically to work out how much to take off of the crown stem. So once you've measured that with your calipers, you can, deduct that amount from the total measurement of the crown stem. So remove it again. I'm just giving it a little bit of a clean. I noticed whilst it was on there, it was a bit dirty inside. So let's give it a quick dial. Best to pick these things up as you go along because you might not see it later. And then when you crank down the case and uh, you've got a lot of dust in there and it's, it's no good. So I'm just cleaning off a few bits that I've spotted uh, with the Vodico as I go along. Uh, pop the mover back into the case just checking that those bits are not underneath which it is so we're going to just remove those pieces you can actually see the AR coating there in that picture so that's that's excellent it's good, really 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 good um, cases is really really good quality so what I'm doing here is just measuring the total length of the stem and then what we're going to do is deduct the amount we need off so we know where to cut so grab your total length, 
and then take yourself a permanent marker, Sharpie, whatever you want to call it, mark it so that you can see it and then just snip it off. So get a nice clean cut. Once you've got the clean cut, if it is a little bit rough, you can clean it up with a file or some sandpaper. Generally, I find the better quality stems tend to just cut almost straight. Once that's done, we're going to test fit the crown and stem once again. So um, you can see that I'm using plier to hold on this piece onto the threads that we're not going to use. In okay, case so there's no damage, don't hold it down the other end. Um, so we're going to pop that back into the movement and see if that works. Generally, it, this method I've found tends to work very well. I've not really had any uh, issues with it. Um, I also find that the, the better quality stems are the way to go. Don't go for really rubbishy stems. Or if you find they're rubbish, just, just scrap them and get new ones that are better quality. Okay, so that's all in. And it's a case of you can then test that everything's working okay. So it's screwing down fine and going back fine. Uh, a good thing to do is actually just eyeball where the crown is before you start this process so you know exactly how far down it's supposed to go because then, you, then you'll notice because there can be sort of fractions amount off that is not quite right. So just make sure you eyeball it first so you know how far down that um, crown is supposed to go into the uh, case. So once that is done, what we're going to do is just remove it once more because what we're going to do now is use our Loctite to make sure that the crown stays onto the stem. So it's a case of just releasing the crown to just unscrew it then pushing down that small lever, remove the crown and the stem. And then what we're going to do is pop on some Loctite. Once you've done that, then put the uh, crown back on, um, put a little bit too much on this one. So what we're going to do is clean that up with a bit of Rodico or a piece of tissue or anything, but don't leave any fibers in there. That's why I'm using the Rodico to take off the extra. Um, clean that all up. Um, you need to, I forgot to show it in this one, but I, th I greased the um, O-rings before I put this in. So it's all greased up. Um, there is three on that crown, so I greased those all up with silicone. Then it's a case of popping it back in, and we're going to silicone grease the case back gasket. Make sure that it's clean, make sure that goes into the watch okay. Keeps the waterproof, obviously. Pop that gasket back in. Normally when the gaskets are new, it's, it's quite straightforward and simple. Then what we're going to do is put the case back on. So it's anti-clockwise, then clockwise by hand um, to make sure that you don't cross thread it. Uh, you can actually see on the back of the case there, it's got this really nice engraved wave. Re as I said, I've said it whole video, really nice, really, really nice um, case. Really, really nice case. Uh, really well built. Um, so wind that on as far as you can get it um, by hand. You can use your fingers if you want. I've pushed it there, but you know, let it get down tight. And then what you want to do is crank it down with your case back um, opening tool. So here we can see the watch. And we're going to put on the strap. This is a reasonably good quality strap. I got them from Watch Gecko. Um, yeah, really nice watch. They're quite, they're quite stiff, but what I like about them is that they're made from like FKM rubber, so they don't collect all that sort of debris and dirt and stuff that a lot of the other ones do. They're not as soft, or, you know, and in some ways you could argue not as comfortable, but they don't have that really stretch. If they take a bit of time to break in, which I prefer to be quite honest with you, I prefer to break a better strap in than to have those nasty lint magnet sort of um, off-colored squishy things that you get. I really don't like them. So, right, so here we can see the watch. This is sort of the first reveal. And it's it's come out really nice, you know. the The case is is amazing, um, as I've I've said. The dial's great. Hands work out really well. There is a mismatch in loom between the hands and the dial, um, but it, it's negligible. But you you can see it. So we can see here the watch. The other thing is that the uh, 
bezel shroud on this one as you can see is silver on the original it was black um you can see on wrist now i did plan originally to spray the shroud but because the case is so nice i decided i'm not going to i'm going to leave it as it is you know unmodified in that manner and leave it as you see it as a silver silver color so stainless steel color and we can see it here it's it's come out really really nice really really nice build and we can see outside in daylight now sort of get a better idea of what it looks like um really enjoyed building this watch um mostly because of that that case the dial's really nice and the hands and of course that's that second hands you can see it going around there looks really really good it really offsets this build that second hand um so whether i was using this dial or not a different dial i think i'd still use that second hand because it just looks brilliant anyway this has been another um, modding video by the Bald Watch Modder. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you soon with more content.